All right, guys, in today's video, we have some next gen console news and information to go over and talk about. The first thing I want to mention is something that you should be paying attention to if you are somebody who is eagerly awaiting some more official news from Sony about the PlayStation 5, because it seems as though PlayStation 5 promotional material has been spotted in some EB Games stores in Australia specifically, and this is a really good sign because this is very clearly an indication that Sony will be talking very soon. I think we all anticipate this. And there are other things I do want to take a moment to talk about in this video, such as an analyst predicting that the PlayStation 5 will still outsell the Xbox Series X and Series S combined, which is pretty interesting. And we also have a market research firm believing that Microsoft has handed PlayStation 5 an advantage by focusing on the digital strategy. But before we get into that, I wanna take a moment here to talk about our expectations going into next week for PlayStation, okay? The reason why I wanna talk about this is because it seems inevitable that Sony's going to be doing something next week. Even if they originally weren't planning on it, I have a feeling they have moved everything up. I've been saying that Phil Spencer made it clear that everything we currently know about the next gen Xbox consoles and we learned this week, we were supposed to learn about it next week. So that tells me Sony's original plan was to either do something next week alongside Microsoft or possibly the last week of September. And I have a good feeling that considering how, you know, everybody is sitting here basically looking at Sony saying, okay, Microsoft revealed this information. Now it's your turn. I have a good feeling that Sony has pushed things up and so we know we're going to be getting the price, release date, and pre-order information. We know this is going to happen, and it's most likely going to happen next week. But my big question is the PlayStation 5 event, the long-rumored second PlayStation 5 event. We've been hearing this for quite some time now. There's going to be a teardown. They're going to talk more about backwards compatibility. Apparently, they have more game reveals, which to me is the most significant thing. They have to show off the UI. And it really sounds like Sony has saved a lot of this stuff to really make a big deal of it, to ensure that they show it all at one time at one place during some type of live stream that could potentially be an hour long, maybe a little bit less, depending where they do make a big deal of it, right? They make it a big thing. To me, it seems likely that this is what Sony wants to do because Sony has proven that this is what works for them and they know it works for them. They know it works really well. They know how to build the hype. They know that people like the events. They like the showmanship. They really like a big thing planned. And so if I had to give my prediction, because that's all this is, I am not an insider, nor do I have inside information, it seems likely to me that if there is going to be a PlayStation 5 related event this month specifically, if it's not going to be pushed to October, if there even is an event, it's going to happen next week on Thursday. I could see Sony announcing on Monday or Tuesday of next week that they will be doing an event on Thursday, September 17th. As far as I know, there's nothing major going on that day. If there is, I'm unaware of it. And so that will basically start the train, the hype train, and everybody's gonna have to get aboard that hype train. I do not think that Sony's gonna come out here in a blog post next week and reveal the price, release date, and pre-order info. I think they're gonna save it for their show. And I think they wanna do this purposely because they want to sell people on their console. And the best way to do it is if you're gonna drop the price, if you're gonna drop the pre-order info, you do it after you show them a lot of really exciting stuff. So that way nobody cares if your console is $500. Now, is this guaranteed to happen? No, this is just a prediction on my part, but I had to take a moment to talk about it because honestly, if we don't get some type of event next week, I don't see us getting an event during the last week of September, even though that could have potentially been Sony's original plan. It's very possible that they don't care that Tokyo Game Show is happening during the last week of September. They may just say, it doesn't matter, we're still doing our own thing. It just doesn't seem very likely. So I don't know, maybe Sony's plan this whole time was to do something big next week. Maybe that's when it was planned during the same week that apparently Microsoft was set to reveal this information, but we know we got it early. So I just wanted to take a moment to mention this because I just, I wanted to tell you guys what I think, what I'm expecting, and I'm gonna be really interested to see what you guys expect. We've been hearing enough from the insiders and the rumors. And at this point, I don't even think it's worth paying attention to them because I don't think anybody really knows 
what's going to happen. So at this point, I just figured I'd offer you my prediction. I will be interested to see what you guys have to say. But as this article says here, apparently the PS5 is going to outsell the Series X and Series S combined. It says PS5 is the clear front runner for the next generation crown, according to analyst reports and surveys thus far. However, until recently, these indicators for Sony, Sony's dominance hasn't factored in the recently revealed Series S. Empire Analysis is a data research and analytics firm specializing in media content and communications based in the UK. The firm's head of games research, Pierce Harding Rolls, has developed a study that compares the market potential for both the PS5 and the Xbox Series S slash X. The analysts previously predicted in June that the PS5 would far outsell the Series X by almost two to one over the course of the generation. The market leading firm has now given an analysis on Microsoft's console positioning. See the next gen forecast below. And so it goes on to say here, furthermore, Harding Rolls added the following on the impact of the Series S in regards to the forecast. He says, in terms of the outlook for next gen Xbox sales, the key assumptions are as follows. Some sales of the Xbox Series X will drop to the cheaper Series S. A portion of Xbox One sales will transfer to the Series S and result in a more rapid transition to next gen and pull forward some sales from later in the cycle. Some more Xbox One S slash X users will be convinced to upgrade at this lower price point compared to the Xbox Series X. Uh, X at 499. While the Series S has indeed improved Microsoft's competitive outlook for the next generation, a large disparity remains predicted. The analyst considers Microsoft's strategy to have put the software giant in a better position to compete with Sony. However, the strength and momentum of the PlayStation brand are undeniable as an incredibly successful generation begins to close. Additionally, Sony's huge investments into first party and exclusive content have the analysts convinced that PS5 is all but inevitable. Only time will tell which console becomes the next gen king. And so I just wanted to take a moment to mention this because, you know, it sounds like this analyst is still kind of sticking by the idea that, okay, the Series S was revealed and it will no doubt help Microsoft when it comes to overall console sales. But in general, they still believe the PlayStation 5 is not just going to compete, it's going to still kind of dominate. And to be completely honest, I don't think anybody really feels any differently. I do think that the Series S does help Microsoft remain more competitive in the console space. And a lot of people I'm sure are wondering if I'm going to be talking at all about what some developers have been saying recently about the Series S console. Don't worry, we will be talking about that. I will probably have a dedicated video where we discuss it. And we will also be discussing it during the next episode of Press X podcast happening on Sunday. But to uh, finish this video, we're talking about a market research firm and what they believe is happening now. They're saying analysts at market research firm DFC Intelligence believe that Microsoft's heavy emphasis on its long-term digital strategy has handed Sony and its PlayStation 5 a major advantage. In a note published on its website, DFC echoed the thoughts of a number of industry professionals who believe that Microsoft's messaging surrounding the next gen has been confusing and that the Xbox Series S has added to that confusion. According to DFC, early adopters will not want the inferior 299.99 system. With both of its consoles, Microsoft remains focused on a digital subscription-based future, which works just fine on its current hardware and leaves players little reason to upgrade. Whatever hardware can be delivered in 2020 will sell out. The console systems are likely to be in short supply and Microsoft may be able to manufacture more Xbox Series S units. In theory, this could give Xbox a larger initial installed base. Unfortunately, everything else is clearly in favor of the PlayStation 5. Microsoft lost control of the media message and it is looking like PS5 will be the system for those who want to play exciting new games. The Xbox brand seems focused on a digital future for classic franchises delivered via game pass and cloud streaming as we have discussed this could be a solid long-term strategy however for selling a high-end new game system it is less than ideal the current xbox one platforms work fine for microsoft's digital strategy so there you go these are what some analysts are saying what some research firms are saying about the current situation they're obviously giving an updated take 
because of the recent announcement of the Xbox Series S. And it's always interesting to hear what they have to say because it's literally their job to try to predict this. There are some people who believe that these are just random people making random predictions, but that's not what they're doing. They actually do have important data in front of them. Of course, they could always be wrong. And in fact, they're usually never on point exactly. They are predictions at the end of the day, but these people do know what they're talking about and they, you know, this is what they specialize in. So it's always interesting to hear their take. And to me, it seems kind of obvious that the PS5 is still set to have a lead uh, to some extent, it, not just in mind share, not just in, you know, having more games, games that come off as more appealing in general, but it's going to translate to just having a significant lead potentially in hardware sales. It seems that Sony doesn't need a Series S like PlayStation console to take some type of sales lead. So to me, that's not surprising at all. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. If you did, be sure to leave it a like. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.